Hello everybody, this is Alex, also known as Solanus Dracone, and this isn't what you think, or it might be a little bit what you think. I am kind of rediscovering Skyrim, as it were. It's a game I never honestly paid much attention to in the past, but I have pretty much discovered a deep and abiding passion for it. Uh, it's, you know, a lot more fun of a game than I remember. Uh, of course, a lot of my earlier experiences were because I was playing it like a scrub. Uh, but after watching many a True Nerds playthroughs, uh, you start to learn a little bit more about the systems in this game. And when you know more about the systems, then you can do my favorite thing. You can dank the game. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and this is not going to be a full playthrough by any means. This is just going to be me playing up to a certain point that I feel like from there it's just basically coasting. I'm gonna show a couple of my favorite tricks, a cup you know, in this particular one I'm going to show my favorite playstyle, but we're we're just gonna have some fun and you know I'll be stopping this well before I actually end the game. I'll be stopping at a point where I feel like I've shared everything that I feel is actually necessary to share. So, disclaimer, disclaimer, oh my god, disclaimer, this is going to be a modded playthrough. I have a very strict rule about mods. Uh, my mods must, at the end of the day, only save me time. That's it. I am not modding to boost anything too much. I am not modding to overpower myself. What I am modding to do is to save myself time. If it's something that I could do otherwise, just by going around the world or just playing the game in general, if it saves me busy work and doesn't give me any real advantages as far as gameplay, it's all right to do. Of course, the very first mod that I'm going to mention, because there are quite a few, the mod that I'm going to mention is the unofficial Skyrim patch by Arthmore. Uh, very, very good mod, fixes quite a few things about the game. Uh, puts back stuff that should have been there, fixes certain timings, it just, I'll, I'll try to point out where the unofficial patch has actually made the game better. So that's that's always active. I have, I have studied it a bit as per my preferred playstyles, and it, it only gives one or two small disadvantages over the vanilla version without the mod, but that's, that's enough talk. Let's go ahead and start the game. And that introduces mod number two. Start a new game with mods? Yes. Mod number two is Dime's Quick Start. It basically just sets you at the end of the Helgen Cave after you have uh, normally gone through that. Everybody has sat through the damn opening. Nobody wants to see it anymore. It's boring. It's old. So it just skips you ahead to the end of Helgen. Now, of course, we're seeing mod number three, Unread, Glow, Unread Books Glow. We'll get to that in a minute. So, when choosing your race, I'll be honest with you, I, I tend to agree with many a true nerd. Probably the best uh, race, or rather the race that gives you the best starting boosts, is going to be the Breton. Mainly because, A, if you're going to play a Conjuration build, which that's what I'm going to do for this particular playthrough, then it starts you off with the Conjure Familiars, with the Summon Familiar, which is, of course, your very first summon, or at least the very cheapest summon, and it lets you get a little bit of a boost. Another reason is that Bretons have 25% resistance to all forms of magic damage, and that stays good throughout the whole game. If you look at every other class, they are resistant to fire, so what? Fire is a form of magic. High Elf, uh, strongly gifted in the arcane arts, they can call it blah blah blah, whatever. For me, the Breton is the best choice as your starting class. It's going to give you the most bang for your buck. So, having chosen that, the body, we're gonna make it a lady. It's gonna be a lady this time. The eyes, I'm going to go ahead and change to... Yep, those opaque white eyes, almost blind. Uh, don't care about much else except for the hair, and I will generally settle upon a specific hairstyle. I think this one probably looks the best, and let's see. Go ahead and make her as bright blonde as possible. 
Yeah, that'll do. I think that's good. So this is my conjuration character. Her name is Adira. And that's where Unread Books Glow comes in. What Unread Books Glow does is it makes the books that you haven't read glow. Very simple. Now, you might say, ah, oh, that's scrubbish, that's a horrible thing, you, you fucking around with the game. I don't know, man. See, I don't consider it fun to go, go and browse over every single book to see if I've read it or not. I don't find it fun to have to guess whether a book is good or not. It's, it's just a time waster, it's a time sink. And so, therefore, I go with that. I'm going to set the brightness to bright. I'll turn off standard books, okay, just because, you know, you can generally tell if a book is a skill book by the value of the book. This I learned from many a true nerd. So I'll turn on skill books. Uh, we'll uh, en enable the list skill that the skill book teaches you. Spell tomes on, quest books on. Now, of course, this part is from the Dimes Quick Start. It asks you, well, who did you befriend while you were escaping? I befriended Hadvar. I always befriend Hadvar, no matter where I sit on the side of the conflict. And that's mainly because when you get to Riverwood, who you have chosen to leave Elgin with determines which set of, uh, well, shall we say goodies you gain access to. And I think that Hadvar gives you the best selection, so Hadvar it is. And there he is waiting on us. Now, Dime's Quick Start, I, I <laughs> could kind of consider it an advantage, but for this playstyle, it's also a bit of a disadvantage. You'll notice, it does not give you everything that you could have picked up throughout Helgen Dungeon. You don't have the mage robes or anything like that. I suppose you could go back for them, but oh, what is all this? No, 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 this won't do. So yeah, it, it's a bit of a disadvantage. Uh, truth be told, I didn't even know that that was a thing until now. So yes, the, the starting stuff is just your basic heavy armor. Uh, you get a few weapons, you know, whether you like a sword or an axe or what have you. If you like a bow, you can have that. Uh, so there is that. I'm going to go ahead and mark my stuff that I would like to use. I'm going to favorite up some stuff. Flames is occasionally useful. Conjure Familiar is going to be a damn staple. And healing, of course. And that's all for now. I'm going to go ahead and set Conjure Familiar and bring out my sword, and we're going to press on. Okay, and as soon as we're out the door, I don't give a shit what Hadvar is talking about. It's time to start grabbing up all the ingredients that you can. Because even though I never bother getting alchemy up, I still like to do alchemy at the beginning of the game because it's a very, very quick and easy way to make some money. And you're going to find you're, you're going to be in need of some money as the game starts out. So as you're on your way to Riverwood, just go ahead and grab up every single herb, every single ingredient that you can find, every flower, every butterfly, just anything. Anything at all. One good tip is that Mora Tapinella's here only grow on rotting trees. So if you see a rotting tree, go ahead and seek it out. It'll probably have some Mora Tapinella on it. Not always, but usually. Some of your more valuable herbs that you're going to find are actually going to be thistle and tundra cotton. So if you see that stuff, grab it up. Lavender too. Lavender is very useful. You may also notice I am trying a slightly different format to my usual method. Uh, in an effort to try and cut down the boringness on the videos, I essentially am going to take the very vain notion that when I'm not talking, it's boring. Of course, if there's some hot action, I'm obviously going to show it. But if, uh, if I'm not speaking, that means that there's not really anything interesting or of note going on. So uh, that's, that's something I'm doing different. Hopefully it's going to make for a uh, tighter sort of video. It's going to make things better. Hopefully. All right, so the Guardian Stones. Um, quite frankly, I, I don't really care about any of them. I guess I'll go ahead and take the, uh, the Mage Stone because uh, that gets the Mage skills up faster. And one thing I did learn from many a true nerd is that the standing stones, the guardian stones, the very first three that you come across on the path, correspond to the different background colors. You'll notice that pretty much all the magic is going to be on the blue background. All of the, uh, well, shall we say guile-based stuff, pickpocket, lockpicking, all that good stuff is on the green background. And all of your attack slash melee stuff, uh, physical attacks basically, 
as well as quite a few of your crafting are going to be on the red background. It doesn't matter for me at this point. It, it, it seriously doesn't matter. I don't care. I'm only taking the Mage Stone right now because it'll provide a small boost to the skills that I actually care about for this very particular moment in the playthrough. Oh boy, first battle of the game. Here's how I'm going to do it. Oops. I'm going to get out my familiar and I'm just going to see how much he can handle on his own. That's the playstyle. Uh, when you're playing a Conjuration build, you're not built to handle a lot. And as you can see, the Conjure Familiar does not do a hell of a lot. He, uh, he's not very good for him for much. Still, he can serve to uh, slightly boost your Conjuration skill. So just whenever you're about to get into a battle, go ahead and take him out. Bring him out. At this point in the game, any spells I cast are going to cast just cost the full amount of magicka. So uh, we're, we're going to be a little bit, uh, going to be a little bit in the shitter for a while. We're not going to be able to stand up to much. So we're going to be trying to avoid direct battle as much as possible. And so we come into Riverwood, where Hadvar has kind of gotten ahead of us and is already talking to Alvor. So let's talk to Alvor. Every day we get visitors in Riverwood. And I'm going to ask, you got anything I can take? Of course. Take what you need. But what's all this about? What are you two doing here? Alright, so, um, not, not most of what he's going to have is going to be any good. I'm just taking stuff that might be considered remotely valuable. I suppose I could take the haunting brew meat and the food and sell it and all that, but that's, that's just, that's just twitching. I don't want to bother with it. A dragon attacked Helgen and destroyed it. Hadvar and I escaped together. What? A dragon? In Helgen? That explains what I saw earlier. Flying down the valley from the south. I was hoping I was wrong about what I thought it was. It was a dragon. Hadvar's gonna tell you the exact same thing, man. A dragon? Here in Skyrim? What's this world coming to? First the war... Now dragons. Trouble loves company, they say. The Jarl needs to know if there's a dragon on the loose. Riverwood is defenseless. We need to get word to Jarl Balgraf in Whiterun to send whatever soldiers he can. If you'll do that for me, I'll be in your debt. Okay, great. So I've already mm -hmm. taken as many supplies from him as I want to take for the moment. And, you know, after sitting through that... I'm not entirely inclined to listen to every single bit of dialogue that they spew, so I'll probably just be skipping the dialogue. And by skipping the dialogue, I mean basically hammering the A button. X if you've got a PS4 controller. I should say that this is, of course, Skyrim Special Edition on PC. On PC, in order to make the game not shit itself, I first off using the uh, NVIDIA GeForce Experience, which, you know, that's the... Uh, that's, that's just, you know, the program that comes with NVIDIA cards. I've gone ahead and maxed out the settings for Windowed Borderless. Uh, also, using a tool called the NVIDIA Profile Expect Inspector, excuse me, not Expector, Inspector, using the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, I have uh, set my max frames to 60 frames per second and also enabled VSync. So that, that helps keep things nice and smooth. So there's a couple things I like to get done while I'm in uh, while I'm in Riverwood. Did I see you talking? Yeah, yeah, Sven. Whatever. Blah blah blah. Yada yada. You hope. Whatever. Thinking. You're such you, a bitch. I hate you, Fane Doll. Yeah, I'll totally do that. that I'm only coming around back a to talk to Fane Doll and b to get my hands on uh, just a few of the little ingredients that are going to be back here. Uh, don't miss out on the ingredients. Every single one of these is gold in your pocket. You pretty much want to scour a town when you get to it for all of the ingredients that you can possibly manage. Again, that's how you're gonna make your money. Now, I'll go ahead and mention it now because eh, probably not gonna be a better time to mention it, but another mod has already kind of been witnessed in effect already, and that is the mod called I Don't Know You. What it basically does is it cuts down on all the fucking chatter. You you won't hear just random people walking by spouting their life story at you. They won't just say shit at you. They won't just fuck with your day or interrupt conversations. It's beautiful. It makes the game so much more quiet. Okay, into the Riverwood Trader. 
Blah blah blah. Yeah yeah yeah. You know what? I'm gonna just go ahead and rat Fane all out because he's an asshole. Why that? Thank you for telling. I mean, Sven's more of an asshole, but uh, well, no, no, Sven's not more of an asshole. Uh, and also get the quest from uh, what's his face here, Lucan. Yeah. Yeah, Lucan. I got, I got it. Okay, goodbye. There we go, the Golden Claw. So, um, make sure to duck into uh, Alvor and Sigrid's house real quick. Partly because there's gold on the table here. Yoink. There's a bit of gold in the chest. Yoink. Ooh, some lockpicks. That'd be nice. And, most importantly, they've got a Frost Merriam up there. Go ahead and grab all the garlic and shit. Don't forget downstairs. And while you're down here, take these. Okay, make make sure you're hidden. Obviously make sure you're hidden. But blacksmith's potions can be hard to come across. And these will let you improve weapon and armor 20% better. So uh, I don't normally bother with the skill increase stuff. But uh, when we're talking about craft crafting that affects your equipment I'm I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab those potions I'll steal them and that's that's kind of why I'm doing Adira here this way because she's she's my uh, she's my bitch character she doesn't give any fucks she'll get down with anything she will steal she will kill she will just she'll do everything so yeah I think that that basically from a character perspective Suits a conjuration mage. A devious conjuration mage that dives to the back of the party and lets everybody else take the hits for her. She don't have morals. So let's go ahead and duck into the sleeping giant inn. Because Sven's here. And Sven. Yeah, yeah, Camilla. Goodbye. And no, I am not I am not taking Sven along with me here. It's just a small little infusion of gold, just doing a few tiny little quests around Riverwood. Stuff that doesn't put you in harm's way, basically. Oh. I hear a bee. Where, where's the bee? Where's the bee? There's the bee! Sometimes there'll be bees around this very spot, sometimes there won't. Ooh, grab them if you see them. They're ingredients. And now we're heading out into the wider world. You'd, you'd think Whiterun's going to be our first stop, but it's not. Remember, always check around. If you see a butterfly, grab it. Grab all the reagents, grab all the ingredients. You want them all. You want it all. And one more note on harvesting Mora Tapanella from, uh, from logs is that um, you're, you're not harvesting the mushroom. You're harvesting the log. So if you see right here, you grab that. You've harvested all the Mora Tapanella that are on that trunk or on that log. So, you know, if you see more and you're like, why can't I get this? Because you probably already farmed it, you dink. I like to take this path to Whiterun. I consider it safer. I think it's probably the only real safe path to Whiterun. But you only run into maybe one or two wolves on this path, whereas going the other direction you might run into a bit more. And if you're, uh, you're trying to avoid getting your ass handed to you early on, it's, uh, it's as good a path as any, but fuck you. Summon. Come on. Come on. Come on, I dare you. Oh, come on. Come on, familiar. You can do it. You got this. You got this. Go. Oh, he don't got this. That's okay. He took care of it enough for me. So, that brings me to how does Conjuration level up exactly? Well, each successful use of Conjuration, either in front of an enemy or on an enemy, will result in some leveling up of the skill. Of course, the simpler the spell is, the less effect it's going to have on you leveling up, so my Conjured Familiar is not going to do dick for right now. The hell? You know, sometimes this happens. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Oh, there's just, there's just a wolf on the other side of the river, and he doesn't know how to get to me. Well, fine, stay on the other side of that river, dog. And, of course, along this stretch of road, you'll, uh, you'll run into, quite often, your first random encounter. And I'm, I'm not sure how random it is, because every single time I've gone by, it's always been the Imperials escorting a prisoner. And Hadvar, if you actually pay attention to what he's saying, 
says, hey, don't don't run into any Imperial soldiers, it might cause more trouble. Dude, you, you walk past these guys, they'll they'll bark at you a bit, but they won't actually do much. Go ahead and kill a mud crab over here. That gets us the mud crab chitin, and I just like to go ahead and eat some of the stuff off of people. Just any anything I kill, I generally will eat whatever's in their inventory that's edible. Especially if it's an ingredient I haven't learned the effect for. So since I know that there's a mud crab that's going to be right there, I went ahead and killed him and ate him. So because the I don't know you mod is enabled, you're probably not going to hear these guys snarking at you too much. Get away. Normally they say get away, this is imperial business. But as long as you don't interfere with the prisoner, they don't give a shit. So they're, they're not squawking at me, they're not bothering me. Hi. Excuse me, sorry. Butterflies. Usually butterflies on this corner of the bridge. If you wait until nightfall, you'll start to get torch bugs and, and uh, luna moths and all that good stuff. I don't generally like to wait until nightfall. I like to do my herb gathering during the day. So just gather up whatever's around here. Like I said, tundra cotton and lavender are pretty darn important for, uh, for your early game alchemy if you're using it like I use it. All around Haunting Brew Meadery, and then if you duck under the bridge here, under this bridge right here, there will be a Nern Root. You can always hear Nern Root, and generally if it's at nighttime, you can see it. So this would be the northbound bridge just at the corner of the Haunting Brew Meadery. Now, don't uh, don't forget to go across the river and check out the uh, the Chilborough, Chilforo and Battleborn farms, because they've got quite a few useful herbs and such there too. Like, for instance, at Chilfurrow Farm, look at all this wheat. It's not even stealing. You can just have it. Now, of course, the intention is that you'll harvest the wheat, bring it to the farmer, and he'll pay you for your efforts. But I can make a lot more money off of this wheat than what he's going to give me. Don't forget the chicken's nest. Just check around the farmhouses. Make sure you're grabbing up all the herbs. The mountain flowers might not seem like much. Ooh, butterfly. Ooh, butterfly. The mountain flowers might not seem like much, but they add up. They, they combine with stuff. They combine with quite a few things. And of course, Battleborn Farm. On this side, it's just leeks and crap. But if you go around back, aside from the lavender, which again, as I've mentioned, is uh, going to be one of your big money makers, all the wheat over here, too. Wheat, very, very good for, uh, for alchemy. And of course, over the wall, some chicken eggs here. Glorious. Come on, get the damn egg. Okay. And then just, uh,. Work your way down the road and grab what you missed. Phew, one of the main reasons I don't do alchemy for very long is that I get dizzy from spanning, scanning the camera around just to try and find stuff that I'm missing. It's, it's, it gives me vertigo. So you can easily get vertigo in this game if you're not careful. So once you're done with that, then, you know, just go ahead and head west along this road. Usually right in front of the meadery will be some butterflies. Grab those. I like a sunny day. Sunny days mean butterflies. If it's not a sunny day, butterflies aren't going to be flying. Because their wings will be wet. They can't fly when their wings are wet. That's just science. About mm, part way through when you're in front of whatever farm that is, you'll find another Nern root down here. It actually doesn't make a whole lot. Alright, let's, let's go see the giant battle. Honestly, usually by the time I get here, I think this is Pelagia Farm. Let me double check. Yeah, Pelagia Farm. By the time you get here, they'll have sorted it out. And Ayala's gonna want to come bitch at you. Well, no, go away. Fuck of off. I don't care. No, fuck, I don't give a shit. Fuck I'm off. With my sh shield. Fuck your shield, and brother. And we shall all, you're all problem. incestuous. Whatever. The old man. Go, go if you fuck go to off. Him. Okay. Good luck. Good luck to you, too. I, I normally give Pelagia Farm actually a wide berth, but yes... The companions will always be fighting a giant when you first come by, right here. And if you search it, the only thing you'll find on it is the arrows. Because, fun fact, when you shoot something or when something shoots you, more often than not, the arrow goes into the inventory. Oh yeah, and some eggs here. Finishing all that bupkis up and uh, getting more or less to Whiterun. I'm not actually going to go into Whiterun right away. I'm going to stop right here at the Whiterun stables. There we go. And I've got about 256 gold. Now, if you had uh, if you had gone through Helgen proper 
and looted all the uh, cuirasses off of the Stormcloak soldiers. You'd, you'd probably have a little bit more money if you sold it all to Luke and Valerius over there in Riverwood. But 200's enough. 200's enough for my purposes, so let's hire a carriage. Bjorlim. Need a ride? Where do you want to go? I want to go to Morthal. I do this right away, first thing, every single we'll run, no matter what character I'm playing. I use the carriage, and I go to Morthal. Because in Morthal is the very first companion, and he's basically free. Now, it's my very first companion, I should say. Now, of course, as you walk into town, pretty much whenever you walk into any town, there's always some form of conversation happening between someone, so while they're dicking around and chewing the fat and yelling at each other, I'm just going to go ahead and gather up all the herbs that I can. And by the time you get to the end of the road and back, that conversation will be broken up. And the man we want to speak to will be right here. Ben Orr. I'm the best warrior. Yeah, you're the best warrior. You want me to prove I it? want to prove I it, sure. Alright, so basically, Ben Orr, you could consider a free companion in that if you win in a brawl, then you actually get 100 gold back. It's actually the only companion I know about that'll actually pay you. And it's kind of pretty impossible to lose. Just your own two hands. Weapons and magic are out. Okay. Now let's see what you've got. Now you got a brief second here. I got a brief moment just to set what I want. Okay, I want to take off all of my weaponry so that Come on. I can equip healing on my left hand ah, and just punch him. Now, to be honest, I don't need healing, especially if you're in heavy armor, which, you know, the Kickstart mod does. You'll outlast Ben or just left and a right and a left and a right and a left and a right. Just basically pummel him into the ground. If he actually gets one up on you, you can take a moment to back off and use healing. Believe it or not, in brawls, healing is acceptable. Just keep punching. Be careful, sometimes the townsfolk will get in your face. Sometimes the townsfolk will idiotically try to get between you and the fighter in their weird little pathing rituals. But I, I think as part of the unofficial patch, they keep that from happening mostly. And I just won. Now that was a punch. You're damn right it was. I think I've earned that hundred gold, my good man. And yes, I want your steel by my side right now. Follow me. Let's not waste any time. And now we come into the next mod. Let's which I, which is called Amazing Follower Tweaks. Basically, it lets you do a few more things with followers than you normally could. I, for one, hate the fact that a follower that I have specifically chosen for the fact that they're heavy armor, two-handed, one-handed with shield, whatever, that they pull out a flipping hunting bow and start firing at enemies. I want these guys to charge in like the meat sacks that they are. So, I'm going to tweak some options. First things first, there's, there's a couple ways to do that. Number one, if you go into combat, you can say two-handed weapons. And that means, if you give it a second, magic use has been disabled to accommodate this style, see blah 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 for options. Okay, so that that will cause him not to use magic, but Ben is not a magic user anyway. I'm going to quickly go through the settings, actually, because there's a, there, there's a few things that are slightly overpowering, but you can turn them off. So... I'm going to turn off NPC cannot permanently die as recommended. The also disable follower catch up or re-enable this setting. Otherwise, you can accidentally kill your followers should you draw your weapon near a cliff edge. Eh, you're probably not wrong. Uh, I'm going to turn off allow idle chatter. I don't like them just jawing at me randomly. They'll still say the stuff like, ooh, a cave, dark, dangerous. Um, let's see. They recharge their own weapons, combat regen boost. Honestly, yeah, I'll turn that off. Combat regen boost. I'm, I'm going to turn off anything that uh, that would cause these people to be any better than they normally are. Uh, followers ignore friendly fire. I'm going to leave that on. Uh, frankly, it's kind of stupid that a follower can just jump the hell in front of you as you're winding up a swing and then turn on you, so I'm going to leave that on. Screw you, Bethesda. Uh, followers catch up on weapon draw. I better turn that off. I'll, I'll go ahead and turn it off, even though I really like it. Actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and turn it back on. I'm just not going to be stupid enough to summon my follower at the edge of a cliff. Let's see. Um, avoiding traps. Well, to be honest, yeah, that is a bit of a cheat, so I'll turn that off. Uh, their pack mules. I don't know what pack mules means. Possibly means they can carry more. I'll go ahead and turn that off. Uh, 
skill synergy. Now that's that's a fun little feature in which you actually learn skills from your companions as you go along. If somebody's good with heavy armor, they'll teach you heavy armor. I don't like it. I don't like it. And uh, turn off boost follower stats because that's overpowering. And again, my, my rule is do not overpower. Yeah, if I'm doing my own casual playthrough, I'll go ahead and leave that stuff on. But uh, yeah, now this mod does allow you to have more followers. Uh, actually, it lets you have uh, up to you know three followers or even more following you at once. Uh, honestly, I never use that except for when I'm switching followers out and I'm trying to grab their gear off of them. So let me just double check. Um, do 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 do. Uh, just making sure there's nothing here that would make this uh, make this guy any more powerful than he actually is. Um, yeah, that's fine. I like that. That that's all fine. Okay, so back and uh, just see here. Uh, one other thing. One one of the cool things is that if you go under gear, if you enable outfit management, it lets you actually change what their base armor is. You can actually take their base armor off of them. And you can also turn on allow only only allow helmets during combat, which I think is kind of nice because you know sometimes you're traveling with a pretty follower and you want them to uh, you know to want them to take off your helmet so you can look at them. I'm not going to bother with that right now. This is Ben or he's ugly as hell. Lead on then. But the more effective way, and this is what Amazing Follower Tweaks actually what do you need to take. This is what I got it for is because it actually lets you take their damn hunting bow off them. I'll go ahead and grab this other shit. I'm never going to use it. But uh, if you take their damn hunting bow off them, they can't use it in battle. And you know what? I don't think they should. I think it's fair. I think it's eminently fair that your follower should be what they appear to be. What do you need to take? Now, there are a couple things I'm going to actually put into Benor's inventory right now. Uh, because this is part of my plan as a conjuration build. This is part of my dank, if you will. I want him to hold on to one Death Bell and one Frost Miriam. That's uh, that's what I want him to hold on to right now. Lead on then. Wonderful. I want him to hold on to those. Those those are things that I am going to need. So let's just go ahead and head on back to White Run Stables. We have a few more trips to make. And now my second trip, Bjorlund, my good man. Where do you want to go? We are going to Markarth. Climb and back, and we'll be off. And that, of course, takes us to Markarth Stables. Not really too worried about it. I'm actually going to go ahead and wait till daylight. And that's just because I like to be able to see. Now, of course, around Markarth, you're going to see a lot of juniper trees. And you remember what I said about getting herbs. Get all the ingredients you can get. We're going to be doing a massive round of alchemy at some point. As you're coming up near Left Hand Mind, be sure to come over to Pavo Atias here and just grab his quest. Yoink. Yada yada. Kill Skiga, blah blah blah. What if I took care of it? That'd be great. Wonderful. Not gonna do that right now. Would you believe that uh, a Briar Heart will mess me up right now? Not gonna deal with a Briar Heart until I've got a little bit more in my arsenal. There is one main reason that I've come to Markarth. And that is, I am going for the Lover's Stone. Now, I'm not sure, I, I, I don't think there's actually any wheat around here. So I'm not going to bother with that. But the Lover's Stone, yes. Uh, basically, the Lover's Stone, as opposed to a 20% boost to uh, certain trees, what you instead get is a flat 15% boost across the board. And because I'm going to be using uh, items from different disciplines, varying from the red tree to the blue tree to the green tree, then it suits me to have just a wide range. I'm actually not going to do a goddamn thing with the green tree, but red and blue are both very important to me. They both have uh, very important stuff. So I'm going to just take that 15% across the board boost. Of course, what that does do is that causes the, uh, that causes you if you're married and you fall asleep not to get the lover's comfort bonus which is 15% across the board for a short amount of time. It also disables the well-rested bonus, but that's fine because well-rested is only 10%, and we've got 15% all the time. That's why I want the Lover's Stone. So, as, you, uh, as you're as you heading down this way, you know, grabbing all the Juniper Tree stuff, then 
you'll come to a point where it could branch right. You see right there, you can branch right and go down to uh, Colescaker Mine, which, uh, you know, we will get to that, believe me. But now's not the time. Instead, we want to head up this way. Don't forget to check the trees for hanging moss. Hanging moss is an herb, don't you know? It's an ingredient. The fuck is all this? Hello? Huh? Oh, shit! What? What the hell? What? What? Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, you guys are never here! Holy shit! Oh boy, how are we gonna get out of this one, Ben or? Oh god, the bandit chief one-shots everything. No! No, what the hell happened here? No, 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 this is not going as planned. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Bad touch, bad touch, bad touch, bad touch. Where the hell is Ben Orr? Where? Ben Orr, get off of that damn tree! Come on, Ben Orr! Oh god, I'm starting to sound like many a true nerd now. Are they all bandit chiefs? Holy crap, it's a bunch of bandit chiefs. Two bandit chiefs. What a terrible roll. I can't possibly believe I'm gonna make it through this alive. I might just actually. Oh. And Benor's dead. Well, this went poorly. Ah, damn it. Okay, that, that has never happened before, and you know what? I'm gonna reload. Oh boy, I might not have a chance to reload. Holy shit. That was bad luck. Guys, normally that doesn't happen. Wow. They f fudged Ben or right up the keister. So, okay, guess we're doing this in the nighttime then. I'll catch you back uh, more or less where I was. That's the danger of skipping time, folks. You don't know what's going to pop up as a random encounter. That was, that was ridiculous. Two bandit chiefs? Oh my god. What the hell now? Oh my god, necromancers. Well, they're novice necromancers. Okay. Wow, I got some kind of weird-ass voodoo demon draw on this one. I should be able to deal with necromancers. Actually, it's kind of a good thing that I did run into them. Get the hell back over here, you. And they've got a dog. Oh, get... get fucked. Get fucked, novice necromancers. Well, one, one benefit is I was hoping for some robes, and uh, these are pretty good robes, all things considered. 75% uh, bonus. That's better than the 50%. Ooh, frost salts. I'll take those, because uh, those are part of my plan. And robes of minor destruction. Eh, I'll grab them just for the sake of... Uh, just for the sake of disenchanting them, because disenchanting does get your enchanting skill up, and would you believe I plan to do that? So... Wow, just random encounters central. I, I never normally run into these guys. I, I normally never run into anybody on this path except maybe a wolf or two. It's absolutely mind-blowing. This is me now, by the way, looking much more like a conjuration enchanter kind of person. And I think I'm slightly off course. Yes, I should be further down. Iron ore vein, sadly I don't have a pickaxe. I suppose one benefit of traveling around at night, plenty of uh, plenty of Luna moths and torch bugs, so it's got that going for it, which is great. All right, Benor, Benor, Benor. All right, Jesus Christ, Benor, stop snorting. All right, so um, since two two of the things that I was basically going to try and get anyways, I've come across just by chance is a frost salts and also a torch bug thorax. These are things that I'm saving up Let's for go. something. I promise it's gonna be good. Enough dilly dallying, let's just go get that damn lover stone and get the hell out of this crazy ass part of Skyrim. That shit is happening that we're not even close to ready for. Boom, finally, Jesus Christ, out of here. Goodbye. Back to White Run Stables we go. All right. Now we'll actually go ahead and head on into White Run this time, because now that we've got 
the Lover's Stone, and a, uh, a fair amount of uh, actual ingredients in our pocket, we can actually start to put together a little bit of money. And we're, yeah, we're not exactly broke, but that, uh, that roughly 200 to 300 gold that you start the game off with, it's, it's not going to last long if you're burning it on carriages repeatedly. So sometimes you just you got to stop, take stock, take a break, and actually do your crafting. City's closed yeah, city's closed, whatever. I think this is a guaranteed persuade. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Now, there is a mod that I have used in the past. It's called Open Cities Mod, and it's pretty. It's nice. It basically opens up the city to be part of the world. There are disadvantages to that. Thugs will follow you into cities. Dragons will just show the hell up out of nowhere. Sometimes they still do, as a matter of fact. But there's just, it's just enough to fuck with your game that I don't bother with the Open Cities mod. Alright, so quick few couple errands we can okay, run. Number one, talk to Idolaf Battleborn. Battleborn. Well, Battleborn, of course, Mr. Battleborn. Then I say That'll well, make him a friend. I could tell you were a sharp one the moment I And if you're a friend of the Battleborns, that means that you can go into the Battleborns house and grab a lot of their shit for free. Which is nice. Gotcha. Talk to Adrian. To do you work the forge all day? Blah, 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 and she's gonna give you a sword you? to bring to her Thanks. daddy up in Dragon's Reach. Don't forget to check inside the shop if you need anything. I'll check inside the shop, don't you worry. And, you know, if you've got I Don't Know You installed, then you're you're pretty much going to notice the difference right away. Just walk by people, they go about your, their business, you go about your business, nobody talks to me that I don't want them to, but it doesn't stop the important encounter conversations like the courier or the red guard when those guys show up. It's nice. I like it. So, of course, just, just go ahead and go all around Whiterun and gather up just all the herbs that you can think of, check behind all the houses, check in front of Arcadia's Cauldron here, and uh, Dragon Tongue. That's, uh, that's another thing what we're going to have Ben or hold on to. to take? Good, good. We're, we're slowly building up for something very excellent. Well, as long as we're in this part of Whiterun, let's talk to Isolde. Yes, you're becoming a merchant. I met one of the caravan leaders. Maybe I can help you. That's great. It's worth if a free speech one, point. Talk to Carlotta. Someone giving you trouble, baby? That's okay. I'll take care of him for you. you Mikhail, try, I'll right. kick his ass. Doing Michaela, or sorry, Carlotta's thing real quick lets you get her herbs and stuff for free, which is nice. I like free stuff. Oh, Mikhail. I'm a bard by you trade. need to leave the bitch Carlotta alone. Put you up to this, didn't she? Let's I'm see if sorry. we can win the persuade. What did you just nope. Say? That's a bit higher. I'm not going to pay him 64 gold. Let's beat his ass. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on, Mr. Bard. Dressed in just basic-ass clothes. Taking on a person in metal flipping armor. Let's, let's, let's see your chances. Let's, let's see what your chances are like, buddy. I love how Benor's egging me on in the background there. Fuck off. Get fucked. Heal myself up. You're damn right I do. Fuck off or die. You win. Okay. And that's simple and done. Always, always take the opportunity to try and get your restoration up if you can. That's, uh, it's gonna be important no matter what build you're doing. I think having restoration is just one of the biggest things you can do for your character. So, Carlotta, Mikhail's gonna fuck off. And 250, that's, think about that. She, she paid you way more for beating up a dude than Aventus Avenici pays you for bringing a sword from his daughter. Uh, of course, you can't stop characters talking to each other. What you gonna do? We'll be back for you. Oh, hey, Amarin, what's up? Yeah, what are you two arguing about? It's my business. I'm gonna make it my business. Give me the fucking sword quest. I don't know why I'm saying this, but... Goodbye. And then back here, we've got an eerie tableau. A similarity. I didn't know, up until, like, today, that Braith, the town bully kid, is actually Amran and Safir's daughter. That, uh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, she's, uh, she's a bit of a bully. But, actually, once in a while, I do like to do that little mini, tiny baby quest that, uh, stems from Lars and Braith's argument. 
if you give him just a moment, uh, wait for him to actually start trying to walk away, eventually he'll move. Kid, what's the deal? It's no oh, there we go. Having trouble? Yes. Yeah, Braith bullies me. And, me and tell tell oh, him you'll talk oh, to her. Good. She'll listen to you. He, he gives you two I gold. Just... Piss on your gold, kid. I really don't need it. But it it is a cute little thing, and I'll go ahead and uh, I'll do it. Braith. What are you looking at? I'm not afraid of you, you know. Even if you are my elder. She's a meanie. You need to stop bullying Lars Battleborn. Yeah. Why? Uh, because, um, well, I'm not gonna threaten to beat up a little girl, and I'm not gonna give the poor kid a stigma of having a disease. I'll just say, you want to be shipped off to the orphanage, kid? Because I can kill your parents. Okay, okay, I'll leave him alone. I was just kidding around. Besides, if he'd only kiss me, I wouldn't have to beat him up all the time. That's somehow adorable yeah. creepy. Creep adorable, I guess. But yeah, now now Lars has a better time of it. I'm not sure if that counts as doing a favor for someone in Whiterun, but as as you're basically guaranteed a house in Whiterun and a and a house Carl, if uh, if you, if you're basically guaranteed a house Carl and a house in Whiterun if you do Dragon Rising, then you know don't don't worry about it. If you do the Stormcloak quest line. You're gonna oust, uh, you're gonna oust y'all, oust y'all, Barogruff, and I don't want to do that. And Braith's actually got a kind of a sad tale. Poor little Braith has got a sad tale. No, I can't, I can't steal that stuff. She is pretty much neglected by her mother. Her mother just doesn't have the time for her child. And poor dad. Dad's always out. Dad's always out doing mercenary stuff, so he doesn't have time for her either. He can't bring her along. So, Braith the bully... The, the mean, nasty little kid is... she's just lonely. She's sad. She's... she's got no attention from her parents. It's... it's kind of... it's kind of sad, really. I mean, I'm... I'm... I genuinely... I genuinely feel bad for the kid. I mean, you know, if I... if I didn't think she was such a little snot, I'd, you know, kill her parents and adopt her, but... Number one, I kind of like Amran, and number two, I've, I've already got plans for the children. But anyways, don't uh, don't forget to check around the Halls of the Dead for some Nightshade, just, you know, a few hard-to-come-by herbs in Whiterun. This this takes a little while, and this is why I'm not going to be doing the herb thing for a terribly long amount of time. Just remember, Tundra Cotton and Lavender. Might as well drop by the House of Clan Battleborn. Now, for some reason, the southern door is locked. But if you go in the northern door, door on the north side of the house, it's always open. And I'm not certain that there's a ton of stuff I actually need in this place. But, ooh, there's a book on two-handed. Not that I'm ever going to use it, but it helps gain a level. Let's see, uh, I don't want to steal that, I don't want to steal that. Unlocking is a crime. I'll do it. And that's where another mod comes in. There is, this is, I forget the name of the mod, but it's basically easy guaranteed lockpicking. I know you're going to say, scrub, 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 you should do the lockpicking honestly. Yeah. Well, look at it this way. It's, it's almost impossible that you'll be short of lockpicks in the game. And since in Skyrim, you can attempt any lock, no matter your lockpicking skill, and nobody, nobody in their right mind gets their lockpicking skills up or puts perks into it, all you're doing is saving time. Okay, I'll, I'll pick up every lockpick, I'll, or I'll not pick up every lockpick, but honestly, if, if you've got as many lockpicks as this, you will eventually, you'll eventually find the sweet spot and open the door. Yeah, getting your lockpicking skill up does widen the sweet spot, but I mean, you know, if, if you've played Bethesda games for any amount of time, you've figured out the lockpicking game, so screw it. I consider it a time saver. Um... Really not anything in here I want, actually. Um, I was kind of hoping for some uh, for some ingredients. And these guys are... These guys are not packing ingredients. What do you guys have against herbs and spices? What do you have against flavorful food? What is your deal, Battleborns? What's in the chest? Is there anything in the chest? Well, I'll take some gold. That's nice. Oh yeah, and uh, if you think you can start going around stealing stuff in people's houses, 
be be aware that if you go someplace in the house that they can't see you, they they will they will come up and look for your ass. Like I'm not supposed to be in here. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to be in here. If I'm up in here, I'm almost positive somebody is going to come up here looking for me. Well, apparently nobody is, but it's at least in shops that happens. In shops, if you go and try to try to hide and sneak behind a counter or whatever, they'll they'll come out and look at your ass. So, okay, this is a massive waste of time. You guys have nothing I want. Good day to you, sir. And I think I've more or less picked the back alleys and byways of White Run clean. There's still some lavender over here. Yep, yep, yep. This man I hate. Oh, hey, Sadia. What are you doing out of the inn, Sadia? That's really dangerous, Sadia. Now, there is somebody that I would like to see sitting at the foot of this tree that I don't. So I'm, I'm gonna see if I can wait a little bit. Huh. She's not here. You know what? I'm gonna wait until morning. Okay, is this it? Yes, there she is, and she is coming to sit. So around, I don't know, between 8 and 9 a.m., Danica Spring will come out to take a look at the Gildergreen. Talk to her about it. It's a shame. Yeah, it's this a shame. The, it's a Gilder. It's a disciple kitter. Yada yada. What's the special? I like to do I'll, this quest because A, a I like to heal that. trees, and B, I, think if we had, I like to heal trees. Get, and plus, it's a nice little thing to do. You'll have to do. It's called nettlebane. Okay. Your spirit. It's held in a hagraven nest. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I will do it. So as long as I'm in White Run, gathering up quests and doing stuff for the townsfolk, I grab it. Now, you, you could go up here around Yorvasker and uh, grab up whatever herbs that are there, but at this point it's just mountain flowers. I hate you, Heimsker. I will be murdering that man. Alright, it's when you get up here that you want to take a dunk in the water. Because all around down here are Nordic Barnacle Clusters. Nordic Barnacles are ingredients. Grab them up. And if you're into salmon, I suppose you could catch some. Just, you know, swim around a little bit surface for air and just, you know, grab all the, uh, grab all the Nordic barnacles you can manage. Ah, that was refreshing. Don't forget some of the lavender on this side. And with all the herbs that I care to gather in the city of Whiterun gathered, it's time to go speak to the Jarl. Ah, Dragon's Reach. First thing that happens when you walk into Dragon's Reach, Irileth over there is going to draw her sword on you. And what's the meaning of this interruption? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you fuck off, lady. Stop bugging me. Alright, yes, I saw it. Uh, I'm not going to give him the Imperial spiel, blah, blah, blah. Irileth was right. What do you say now, Proventus? Shall we continue to trust in the strength of our walls against the dragon? My lord, we should send troops to Riverwood at once. It's in the most immediate danger. If that dragon is lurking in the mountains... The Jarl of Falkreath will view that as a provocation. He'll assume we're preparing to join Ulfric's side and attack him. We should Enough. not... And that's another thing that the unofficial Skyrim patch does fix. If you're not using that, then Avanishi just cuts in on what the Irleth is saying. He starts talking while she's trying to finish up her sentence. You'll excuse me. So, I like that. I, I like that it that fixes the timings. Avanichi. Oh <laughs> god, Borlgriff, Bar will you fuck off? Thank you. Let's yeah, go yeah, okay. Avanichi, my good man, here's a sword. Thank you. Give me my 25 gold. Thank you. Please. Take All this blah 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 going on. But Borlgriff did give us something decent. A bit of steel armor. I'll we'll go ahead and put it on Benor. Just a little something better for Benor. Alright, Bulgriff's gonna come in here and yak at Farangar. Blah. You got a project, uh huh, whatever, blah blah blah. Now, um, one thing that you probably actually want to do is uh, ask I think it is, are you the only wizard in Whiterun? I believe I am, yes. Technically speaking, of course. The city is also home to a priest, priestess, an alchemist, and I'm sure others who practice. Ah, that reminds me. Speaking of alchemists, I have some frost salts for Arcadia. She asked me to obtain them for one of her potions. Would you be so kind as to deliver the frost salts for me? I'm sure Arcadia will provide some form of recompense. Yeah, I'll deliver the frost salts. Good. You're clearly better suited than I am to carry out such a menial task. 
and just just don't talk to me. Just stop talking. God, these guys. Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna grab the shit and go. And uh, let's see, are there any books I want to read around here? There's one, an Explorer's Guide to Skyrim. That just gives you a couple of map markers. It's nice. And while I'm by the map, I'll just go ahead and I'll grab Rorikstead. Because you, you can actually use this map. You can actually use this map to uh, update your own map quite effectively, I might add. Of course, there's, there's not really a hell of a lot here. It's just I know where Rorikstead is. I just like to have it. I like to have it on my map and set it as sort of a westward marker. Now, if you are of the mind to do a one-handed thing, you can sneak into the Jarl's quarters and, uh, you know, if, if nobody happens to be staring directly at you, you could theoretically steal yourself an elven sword. But I'm not gonna. This is not a one-handed character. I'm just in here for the herbs, don't mind me. It's just a little bit of lavender hanging around this place. And another another little uh, quest book. Now, if, if you are at all interested in finding all the quest books and not having to run around, if, if you go to the Mage's College in Winterhold, all of them are in the library. There's also a couple coin purses hanging around that you can help yourself to. So, you know, do it up. Anything that you can get away with not stealing. I've, I've honestly kind of learned not to steal in this game as much as possible. And of course, an unusual gem, which we know is a Stone of Berenziah. I've kind of learned not to steal in this game as much as possible. Ooh, what's this? Hello. Balgriff's greatsword. Oh no 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 no. No, I'm 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 just I'm closing that. See, the thing is, if you steal, then what's going to happen is that you'll get hit squads sent after you, and those guys are actually pretty tough. There's an illusion book in here, not bad. And that's our first level. Since the coin purse is free, I'll help myself to it. And our very first level up. Now, um, for Conjuration build, Magicka is the way to go. And, of course, because we gotta open up this tree, Novice Conjuration. Boom. Alright. Now then, Silver Ingots. Ooh, Lost Legends. Which starts off the Forbidden Legends quest, which you, you'll you'll get that by the by. I'll I will definitely be getting to uh, at least part of the Forbidden Legends, but yeah, you know, that's that's really all I kind of want here in the uh, Yarl's quarters. Sometimes I don't even go in here. Zevanichi's room, by the way. You know, just uh, once you come into the Yarl's quarters, you just hang a right, and that's where Avanichi is, just in case it's night and you want to go ahead and talk to Avanichi. And yeah, I think that's enough for in here. I just, I don't want to have to deal with the hit squads. You, you get people that you, you normally wouldn't expect trying to call a hit on you, calling a hit on you. Like this bitch right here, Gerda. She's called a hit on me for stealing an elven sword. That's why I did not steal the elven sword. Right at this stage of the game, your your major priorities are your magic or regen, I would say. So the necromancer robes are very valuable in this part of the game. And, you know, if you don't happen to run into a necromancer, I'll, I'll show you where you can run into one. I'll, I'll just put it up on the map. Uh, from reading that, um, that book that updates your map markers, the Ritual Stone. If you head east to the Ritual Stone, then there is guaranteed, more or less, to be a necromancer there. And if you just, you know, kill him and steal his robes, then you've got yourself a nice 75% uh, boost there to your Magicka regen, which that's that's very valuable. So, in Arcadia's Cauldron, if we give her the thing, Frost Salts for you, and that's nice, she gave us some, uh, some potions. What that does is she'll actually let you grab a bunch of shit from her shop. You, you can't take everything, you know, you, you can't steal all the stuff, but you can take your, the potions of minor healing, almost all of the herbs, and if you happen to be in the need for void salts, which I guarantee you will be, then, you know, this is a place that you can steal some from. But I know where we can get an actual legal set of uh, void salts, so that's not a problem. Now, of course, if you, uh, if you wanted some frost salts for free, which, you know, according to my playstyle, I know I do, 
then you can definitely go ahead and uh, you know keep the void salts that he sends for Arcadia here. If anything I can help you with, but I, uh, I I know where I can find probably at least you know this is this is pending investigation, but I know where I can find some frost salts. She's not gonna let you take the ice wraith teeth. Frostbite venom is actually quite valuable for what it is. Slaughterfish scales. Just just take whatever is not stealing. Don't forget in the back of the shop alchemy book. It's a very nice thing to have. And I think we are actually ready, more or less, to begin our alchemy. So let's see. Just to make sure, basically the first step to alchemy is eat stuff, okay? All of the ingredients in Skyrim will have four possible effects. And the only way that you can find out the effect number one is to stick something in your mouth and eat it. So I'm going to eat my bee, I'm going to eat a blister wart, just eat one of everything. Okay, even if it's stuff you only have one of, that's fine. And that's going to leave us with a wicked hangover. And we're, we're just practically glowing from all that shit we just shoved in our mouth. But that's taught you all the, all the first effects that you get from just the stuff you've been gathering. And you'll discover more as you mix and match. So, the trick behind any and all crafting in Skyrim is... The higher the value of the item you create, the more it gets you up. And of course you want to create higher value items because you can sell those very well. Now, I believe that at this point, the highest value stuff is going to be the resist things. So I'm going to combine these. And what do you know? That's you actually discover a new thing. Now, things. I would recommend Alchemy what you do is, you know, make, make one of everything. Basically, try to combine a couple of ingredients and just see where the magic takes you. Boom. More stuff. Now regenerate health. That's very valuable. That's something we just learned for, for just messing around. So, go ahead and combine, you know, just, just combine. You, you can do up to three at a time. Try to, try to combine as many things in one go as possible. Every time you discover a new effect, go check it out. See how valuable it is. Most important thing here, most important thing here is that you are expanding what you can access. And the Fortify stuff, that's a little bit more valuable. Go ahead and make a ton of that. As you go, as you go, you'll uncover more things. And the way that the menu on the left changes is uh, every time you learn a new effect, if you happen to have an item in your inventory that provides that effect, it will show up on the left here. If you I lack an item that always. provides an effect, it will vanish off the menu. If you have enough items to make a potion, meaning one of each effect, then it will be in white on there. So just pretty much go through and make your most valuable stuff. You know, burn it up, do the resist stuff. That's that's more valuable than a lot of other things. I'm gonna go ahead. Not really worth it. I think to uh, make three ingredient stuff. I just don't think it's worth it to make stuff with three ingredients in it. Just because you're, you're gonna run out of more stuff that way, so... Let's, uh... Good, good, good. I'm not gonna waste, I'm not gonna waste them on damage health. Look at, look at how little damage health is worth. Once you're done with that, then you just want to start combining random ingredients. And what do you know? Look at these four new effects we've discovered on four different things. And guess what? Damage Magicka regen? Hecking valuable. Look at that, 254. And we can make four of them. You have but to ask. So, play around, you know? Discover discover new stuff. If we can do Regenerate Health's another really good one. That's very valuable. Boom. Just learn new stuff. Combine stuff. Damage magic or regen, very valuable. And fortify conjuration, worth doing. Beautiful. When you uh, when you've already tried combining stuff, it'll it'll darken out when you select it. So just move your way down the menu. Try out different recipes, three at a time. Damage health is completely flipping useless. Ravage Stamina. Let's see what Ravage Stamina does. You have but to ask. See what that's worth. 17. 
Ugh. Once you've run out of possible combinations of things to try, then you've basically got enough. If We've got a feck ton of potions. And now we're about to see another mod that I've installed. Filthy Look Rich Merchants. What have you got for sale? Ah, so you're an alchemist, Merchants then. now have roughly 20,000 gold on them. And I hear you cry, Ah, uh, scrub lord, you nasty little fucker, yeah. Well, here's the thing, okay? Um, number one, yeah, merchants do have a limited amount of money. But if you're using the cart and you're traveling all over Skyrim, then eventually as you do the rounds in each town, you're, they're going to restock their inventory. They're going to buy more stuff off of you. It, you are always going to be able to find somebody to buy your shit. Uh, this, you know, this mostly holds true, except if you're doing like the uber super crazy expensive stuff. But let's be honest, what you're going to do when you run into that situation is you're going to go around the world and sell until you're done selling, okay? You're going to sell until you run out of stock. So that's just a time sink. That's just, you know, all this is saving is time, okay? I'm getting stuff that I need, I'm selling stuff that I don't need, and I don't have to go running around all of creation, so I don't consider it a cheat. Uh, as long as you're not making, oh, daggers with freaking banish daedra on them then you're fine so since uh, arcadia will buy all of our stuff from us here i'm gonna go ahead and forego the gift of charity because you know it's it, if you are using extra speech skill to sell stuff then you know what that's yeah you're getting an so unfair amount of money so I'm, I'm just not gonna bother with that another thing i'm gonna be doing to kind of balance all this out is I'm going to be doing a completely potion-free playthrough. That's right, folks. Potions are only going to be for the purposes of selling. I am not going to drink potions. I am not going to boost my health up if I get into a bad situation. I am going to strategize a way around every situation so that I don't have to rely on chugging a bunch of potions. That is how I'm going to balance things out. I'm just, I'm not allowing myself to drink any potions that do anything. The only potions I'm allowing myself are going to be the enchanting ones and also the smithing ones because when you get around finally t towards the end of things to actually doing enchanting and smithing, you want to be able to get the most out of it. So that's about all I need to do right now in Whiterun, I think. And I think that's where I'm going to call it. Uh, I've been recording for about an hour and a half on this one, and we're going to see what size it looks like when I cut it down. So that's part one of... I'm not going to call it Dank Rim, but it's, it's part one of... Uh, let's Dank Skyrim, I guess. I want to thank you very much for watching. Uh, oh, by the way, um, real quick, this, this may not be news to everybody, but... YouTube is changing its policy on monetization so that any channels which have under a thousand subscribers or under 4,000 minutes watched within the past 30 days no longer get to monetize. As of current recording, I am only at 500 subscribers, so that means in 30 days monetization ends on my channel until I can get up to a thousand subscribers. So now more than ever, folks, now more than ever, for me to be able to even make a cent off of other people's crap. If you actually watch my stuff, if you actually follow any of my social media, subscribe to me on YouTube, please. Let me get that number up so I can actually get something, something out of what I do. I get the joy out of it, and that's great, but come on, toss me a bone. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please subscribe. It's more important than it's ever been. I want to thank you all for watching. Once again, I am Alex, also known as Solonis Raccoon, and this has been Skyrim. Thank you very much, and goodbye.